Honorable Rueda, you'll have a chance to welcome them after the leader of minority. Honorable Speaker, thank you very much for indulging me. This, the statement that has been sought by the very able member for Kitutu Masaba, my good friend Clive Gisairo, raises a number of weighty issues. Very weighty issues. First and foremost, Honorable Speaker, it is now close to one month or thereabouts since this officer was reported to have died in Washington, D.C. Since his death, there have been conflicting statements. A statement from the police was suggesting that this officer had gone for some training in the U.S. Whilst a statement from the family of this deceased officer was clear, was categorical that this officer was part of a mission that had been sent to Haiti. Had been sent to Haiti. Now the family is helpless. Four weeks down the road, they have been told who what killed their kin. They have been told when to expect the body of their kin. But more fundamentally, if indeed it is true that this officer was part of a mission to Haiti, who authorized that mission? In the clear, in the, in the clear face of a court order that any police mission to Haiti remains unconstitutional until certain conditions are met under the law and the constitution. Can I therefore ask that the chairman of the relevant committee compels the, the, the concerned cabinet secretary to come forth and tell the whole country in addition to the family as to how this helpless officer found himself thousands of miles away and was allowed to die a solitary death in a foreign land on a mission which remains unclear to date. Is this how we treat our police officers? That once we use them, we send them to some unknown missions, they die there, and then you remain quiet. And the family is crying, it's agonizing. And I'm speaking, Honorable Speaker, sorry, Mr. Speaker, sir. This is a very, very, very serious, but, and in fact, I would have suggested in a ruling after this, that this question be treated differently. That you compel the cabinet secretary responsible for the police to come here and explain to this house how this officer, and an officer who is just struggling with life from the great land of Omogusi, why are we sitting officers? Yes, honorable member. From the land of Omogusi. What is your point of order? Minority leader, just take your seat. There's a point of order. The point of order, Mr. Speaker, sir, Proceed. and understanding order number one, is that ordinarily this house does not entertain comments on statements. The reason being, it's at the risk of trying to even uh, preempt the answers we're likely to get, and also it tends to lead one towards making political statements that may be unsubstantiated. So the practice of the House is a statement is made, then a response is given, then you can make a comment at that time. But the trajectory the leader minority is taking yeah. is actually not the trajectory of the House. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, leader of minority, it was expected you make a very short comment on this because ordinarily, like you has put it, we don't debate statements. So please conclude. Actually, I was indulged in a special way by the Honorable Speaker. So Honorable Mugara, relax. Relax. You know, when dry bones are mentioned, all women feel jittery. That is according to Chenua Chebe. I don't know what is itching, Honorable Murugara. When a son of the Omogusi is dead, far away in the U.S., and nobody is telling the family what killed him or what took him to the U.S.A. So you will need, you'll need to conclude so, the those very many, so that we don't encourage a lot of debate on this. What's your point about a leader of majority? No, Honorable Speaker, we are a house of records. Honorable Speaker, I just took liberty to have a glimpse at the statement sought by the Honorable Clive. Now, 
to agree with Honorable Murugara that indeed we should not take advantage of such an unfortunate incident as a passing on of an officer who has diligently served our country, <clears throat> an officer who is a father to a very young family. Because this officer, I think, was about 37 or 38 years old only. Served this country diligently and served to rise to the point of being a personal assistant to the Deputy Inspector General in charge of the administration police, uh, 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 the, the Officer Gabo. Honorable Speaker, this statement, as much as it was approved, is laden with very dangerous innuendos, all designed to do what you have seen the leader of minority do, use it as an opportunity to uh, issue out unfortunate and very otherwise irresponsible political statements. Because when somebody claims on a point of order, when somebody claims Honorable Speaker, and if you read the statement, the Honorable Clive, and I want to believe, I hope that the late Walter Nyamato was his constituent, and allow me, because they didn't even have the decency to convey condolences to the family of the late Walter Nyamato, to first take this opportunity. On behalf of the National Assembly and the great people of Kenya who are being served by Officer Walter Nyamato, to express our heartfelt and sincere condolences to the family of the late Namato. Honorable Speaker, this statement avers leader, that the Inspector Walter Namato. Honorable Leader of Majority, you will have to conclude uh, in a short while, but I still give you the microphone so that we don't exacerbate debate on this statement. But proceed then for one minute. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I was saying the. the, the the statement about that uh, the National Police Service is dispatch officers, including the and Haiti, and probably. I know they may not have the geography of the world, but at least the leader of minority. I have been to Washington, D.C. with him. I know he knows where Washington, D.C. is. The Honorable Clive might, not have, might never have been to Washington, and therefore might imagine Washington, D.C., in the United States, and Haiti are one and the same place. And imagine it's a village in Yamira. It is not. He is on a point so, of so order. Honorable Speaker, I, I just wanted you to direct that the leader of minority and the Honorable Clive must not take advantage of the unfortunate passing on of a diligent and committed patriotic officer of our country to play very cheap politics, dancing on the graves of a dead officer. It's unfortunate and sad, Honorable Speaker. Very and well. I hope they Thank you.